Okay. Well, good morning. Um, welcome to the tier three, uh, tier three. Sorry, welcome to the tier three principal and coach meeting for September. Well, I hope you guys have had a great start of the year school year. And just some information about who I am. I'm Monique Sullivan, and I am the continuous school improvement uh, coordinator for the department. Um, I work on under the ESCA team and under Maine's model school support. And I just like to let people know what sections of the ESSA statute that falls under, and it's sections 111141s and section 1003, which is where the money is tied to section 1003 and section 1111 is tied to the programming requirements. Also joining um, me in this uh, webinar is our RR10 coaches. And you can see their names up here um, on the presenter information slide. And then just real quickly, um, the mission um, and the vision and the goals of the Maine Department of Education. The mission is to promote the best learning opportunities for all Maine students by providing information, guidance, and support to our students, sorry, to our schools, educators, and leaders. And this is a driving force behind all the work that we do at the department. And so just real quickly, there is, I want to apologize up front, there are quite a few slides to this presentation. I'm not going to present all of them, just more of some of them are being used as resources um, for you. Um, I'm hoping to get most of these slides done quickly, maybe hopefully 20, 30, 40 minutes at the tops, and then leaving time at the end for discussion about any of the topic areas that were presented today. I'm also going to have a couple of our coaches present a few of the slides. Um, to because they worked on these pieces and I want them to be able to present that to you. So today's objectives are to stay informed about any updates related to school improvement for tier three, um, start reviewing the year at a glance that's in your MOU, um, understand the requirements for substantial approval for this uh, FY25 SIG application. This is a review from the May 30th, uh, a slight review from the May 30th technical webinar assistance. Um, technical webinar, technical assistance webinar, um, but um, at the, um, the coaches encouraged and said, probably just need to throw that in there as a quick reminder for our, for our schools. And then a quick overview of Maine's um, MTSS framework and how it connects to school improvement. Um, understand how to get started on the, st st the strategic plan. And then um, understanding the root causes or the elements of a root cause identification or analysis, with hopeful time um, at the end for a little bit of discussion about that. So just real quickly, um, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Um, Amy, did you have a question? I just have. I just got a message that there's some audio. Um problems just from one person. I don't know if there's anybody else who's having audio problems. Okay. Oh, she's all set now. Never mind. Okay, great. So um, hindsight's always 2020. And when I presented this information back in the spring around May, um, there was a talking about staying in a status for a certain number of years. And really want to change that thinking and focus more on exiting a status versus staying in a status, more like focusing more on the exit criteria. So how do you exit from an identification status? And so for tier three identifications, to exit that, to exit um, tier three status, you need to have two years of not meeting tier three identification criteria. And I have a slide at the end of this presentation or slide deck that kind of shows the different ways that you, a school can be identified for tier three. Also, there's gonna be a high level of scrutiny for using SIG funds for outside consultants. So just you know, be prepared for that if I push back and I ask more questions or ask for some more documentation and to be uploaded to the application, that is why. Very, very, very strongly recommend that you register for the assessment, monthly assessment newsletters and office hours. And I do have a slide at the end of this presentation also of how to get on those. We get a lot of questions, very like very fine detailed questions about how this is determined and how this is determined. And that's kind of a little bit outside of our purview um, when it comes to the, um, the actual administration or the actual, like the tests and all that, that's more of the assessment team or the assessment. Um, I also wanna stress that 
Schools can be identified from multiple letter, layers of support. So a tier three, all tier threes are also tier ones, and some of them are tier twos. Um, just so it's a layering effect. And we try to provide support at all the levels and then the highest level support as well. Um, and then some terminology changes as well. Um, this particular webinar is for tier three schools that are were identified within the 5%. Um, and they receive section 1003 funds, which is the application funds, uh, which also includes school leadership coaches. There are another set of tier three schools that met the tier three criteria, but they're outside the 5% and they're receiving lower levels of support. Um, so there might be, you might have some schools in your district that are tier three, but they're not, they're not getting that um, section 1003 support. And then just to give you guys a heads up, um, Title I is being audited by the state internal Co controller's office this year. Um, and these funds fall underneath Title I. So, and we're still resolving the corrective action plan from the USDOE audit from May of 2023. So try to kind of give you a heads up if I'm not as responsive or um, things seem to be a little more scrutinized, um, that's probably why, or that could be leading to it. There are resource slides at the end of this deck for more information slide deck. And just kind of give you a heads up, we're hoping to present some professional development um, guidance um, at the October's meeting, um, which our coaches will be presenting that information to. And maybe a few other guidance documents if they're ready to present, we'll also have those ready in October as well. So getting started again, here's the year at a glance. Um, we're in August is already done, but some people are still working on some of the pieces in, uh, from the August, working on that CNA, uh, updating it, um, and then starting to look at your root causes. Um, we're not really going to focus on SMART goals today, um, really kind of going back. And what I try to stress, and I've been stressing this with schools and with the coaches, and the coaches are, they're right there with me, but your first goal right now is to get that CNA, that school-wide plan updated and, and analyzed, um, and then determine your strengths, your growth areas, your resource inequities, and your root causes. You can't get to your SMART goals until you've got those first two done. They, that's the bedrock. That is the heart of this work. And so if it takes you a little bit longer, if you don't end up turning your application in, your full application in until the end of October, that's okay. As long as you're spending your time getting that CNA rock solid, getting all your, all your areas determined, really doing a lot of work on that root cause. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that um, a little bit later in this um, presentation. I just want to stress that. Again, this is a review from the May meeting, May 30th, but it's just a, uh, a review. Um, for substantial approval, um, you want to have everything completed in your school leadership and development team. You want to make sure you have all your leadership team defined. Um, I am the program representative, so it's not going to hold up substantial approval, but if I'm opening it for something else, I'll put that in there like, put my name in there for that. Um, and then you wanna have a purpose for all your leadership team meetings. You can use the MOU year at a glance, which I just showed as a guidance, if you're not really sure what to talk about or what the purpose of each meeting should be. Um, and then you wanna have required documents. You wanna have your updated CNA school-wide plan. You wanna have a copy of the signed memorandum of understanding. And then this is just, it's not gonna hold up substantial approval, but if you have that link already in there for your leadership team meetings, and then it's there, and then, then you don't have to do anything else. We recommend doing the uh, shared link. That way you don't have to keep uploading documents to your, um, to your application and it's real time. The only thing we wanna make sure that it is viewable by, any, by anyone. When I, a lot of times when I open the link, it says I need permission. Um, I don't need to edit it, there's no edible, just um, being able to view it. And then you wanna update your address book to make sure all those roles are, um, are correct, make sure that you have all the different pieces. Um, a lot of times I'll get schools that'll say, hey, I turned in my application. I'm like, that's great, but I can't review it yet because it's still waiting for the LEA fiscal authors um, representative and still waiting for the um, LEA authorized representative, which, which is typically the superintendent. And again, no, no cost can occur before the substantial approval date. And we said recommended 8-1. We, 
but we know that date's already um, gone and passed. And then just another review, allowable uses. Um, it's two main ones, uh, 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 the functional operation of your leadership team and uh, trainings associated with operating that leadership team. And then professional learning tied to your CNA uh, school-wide plan. This is the, tr the training that is, that is essential to implementing your strategic plan, your action steps, and really about capacity building um, and that's that's really the main focus uh, for the allowable uses of this funding. Just checking the time here. So back a second. Our coaches are really are really um, kind of pushing our schools to get that substantial approval date. Um, I've had some questions from schools like, well, do I have to do final approval? You can, uh, but if there is anything that's that I have to push back for substantial approval, then um, then it pushes everything back. So the coaches really are working on schools to get that substantial approval as quickly as possible so it doesn't impact your ability to obligate your funds. Okay, MTSS framework, uh, the review of Maine's MTSS framework. Some of these slides may look familiar because we did take them from uh, Andrea Logan. Uh, for some of you, I think one 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 school or a couple of schools were able to attend the session that Andrea and I did at the August um, annual summit, and uh, we really talked about the connection between a school improvement and MTSS. So some of these slides may look familiar, uh, but we thought it was really important to add in, the, in here. So just looking at my notes here real quickly, I want to stress that MTSS is not an evidence-based intervention. It is a framework of supports that are layered based on the needs of students. It's, um, it's a strong, robust, and effective, you wanna have a strong, a robust, effective universal, universal instruction or tier one, um, and then you provide those layering supports on top of that. I see so many times that, oh, our action step is MTSS not really an evidence-based intervention, it's a framework for providing supports. So it's really important to think about that. Um, and it's layering. I, again, I hear, well, our students are, you know, go, I'll talk more about that, but I just wanted to stress that. And this is what um, the main framework is. Next one is, this is more of the traditional uh, kind of visual that we think of when we think of RTI or MTSS. Um, it is tiered levels of so intensity, and I really want to stress that it's it's not a place, it's not a label, it's not a group, it's not where someone, oh, someone's going to MTSS, or those are our MTSS students, or um, those are our RTI students. Um, it's it's just, it's uh, it's a framework for how we provide supports to our students. And it just, the intensity increases as um, students, we find out students need more support. Um, and the supports are not tiered. So it's kind of like an example was given to me, like if you're, you have a student, they're wearing a short sleeve shirt, they're cold. So they put on a longer sleeve shirt and then they put on a parka if they're even colder. So you don't take the short sleeve shirt away, you just keep adding to it. So I think that's really important to think about. Um, and just checking my notes here. And we, I keep hearing a lot about RTI. Um, RTI is response to intervention. That is different than MTSS. Um, MTSS is you create a framework for supports, starting with your universal instruction. And so when you're thinking about your continuous school improvement, you need to look at your universal instruction and see where that is, um, is that meeting the needs of all the students. And then this is a slide that Andrea created. And as you can see, it's she tried to get away from that triangle. Um, and as she noticed, she put tier one, tier two, tier three as, a, as horizontal and not vertical because it is layering and it's not that one goes away while another one jumps up. It's not a, it's not a hierarchical system. It's a layering of interventions and it's not louder or longer. And, uh, you know, you have all your students are getting something at the tier one, and then you have tier one plus more. 
And then tier three, you have the one and two, and then you have more intensity. And she intentionally changed the colors too, to show that like when blue and red, they they make purple. And then when the other, they're supposed to create like more of a pink color. Um, and uh, hopefully you'll be seeing more of this because we're hoping to try to work out to have Andrea come and do some MTSS work with the tier three schools. So hopefully you'll see this again. And then lastly, I know this slide is super, super blurry. Um, there's a, we tried to get a better version of it and hopefully we'll get one for you guys soon. But again, this again, it's showing that this is not a hierarchical system or a framework, it is circular. So you have your universal instructions in tier one, then you have your problem solving, which is kind of your root cause analysis in the, in the school improvement realm. And then your educator support, what professional development do you need to provide to your, to your staff to be able to implement uh, those, those um, supports and then a blended de delivery. So it's all students, all educators, all hands on deck. And it also supports the means whole student um, approach or framework as well. So I know a lot of this was review for some of you, but I wanted to connect it back to continuous school improvements. Okay, next steps. So when I talked about your CNA needs to be the bedrock of your continuous school improvement plan, um, it, is, it is the foundation, it's the bedrock. You wanna determine your growth areas, your strengths and your identified resource and equities. So this next slide, I'm gonna ask a few of our coaches to jump in and talk about this slide for you guys. I, I think I've been identified and I have <laughs> <laughs> uh, my team to support me. I'm Kathy Elkins. And um, this particular slide actually is taken directly from the CN CNA school-wide plan application. And if you look at it closely, the growth area that they're talking about is really describing what are your areas of need. And it's important to think about that area of need as being uh, disaggregated data as opposed to only using summative data. Um, because when you disaggregate, it will help you to have data that you'll be able to progress monitor and, and to identify some root causes. And so you can see on this particular slide, um, you have the chronic absenteeism, and this is actually kind of a, um, a made up slide, but from a lot of schools uh, data. And so you can see that we're talking about fiscal year 24 data and 23 data and subgroups that are included and, and what kind of trends are you seeing um, either in absenteeism or in literacy um, so that you can again, see some trends and also see what some of the strengths are. You know, not everything is gloom and doom. And um, some of the strengths for the literacy program here, you had issues with grade two for two years in a row, but uh, all other grade cohorts show growth from the previous year. And so what are some of the inequities? Again, these inequities are inequities that you have control over. It's not uh, something that, you know, you can blame society because they're not appreciative of our educational efforts, but what is it that your school and you and your teachers have control over that uh, are some inequities? And so uh, in this particular case, uh, there seem to be some inequities at the pre-K and K level of this one school. They found... Um, their attendance was lacking and wondered if the inequities were that they hadn't communicated enough uh, to the parents about when to send their child, as an example. Um, and another inequity, as an example in literacy was that they had significant changes in grade two personnel and more professional development was needed for those new teachers that were being placed in that. Those are just examples, but again, we encourage you 
to um, use disaggregated data that you can really follow trends. And so you don't have to, and you can progress monitor. So you don't have to wait until the end because that's kind of like an autopsy. <laughs> so thank you. Any of my team members want to add anything? Okay, thank you. I just want to add to that um, this should connect to your CNA. Right. So when I open up your CNA, I'm looking at it in comparison to what you've written in your SIG application. And it really shouldn't be anything different. It should be almost like you pulled it out and you've put it into this plan. So, and we are working on trying to create a guidance document that will help with that process, even make it a little bit easier for you. But we're, we're not yet ready to, to release it yet, but hopefully it'll be soon. Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. So the next slide again is kind of just a comparison that when you're doing your CNA and analysis of looking at it, you need to be connecting that to your um, to your MTSS. I know there's I, I keep hearing comment like oh, we have our MTSS plan and then we have our school wide plan and we have our bar plan and we have our RTI plan and we have this plan. This is not an intention to create a new plan. It's really so that you you have your big plan, which is your CNA, and then you're pulling out pieces for your SIG application or your strategic plan focused on the continuous school improvement that you've been identified for um, the Maine's model school support, those indicators, looking at this and really singling in on those areas. So, you know, when you're doing your root cause analysis, um, that's when you're asking those questions, you're evaluating. So there's not a disconnect between MTSS and school improvement. Okay, just checking my notes here. So tell me why this is where, you know, once you have your CNA rock solid, you've got all the data in there, you've analyzed, you've looked at it, you've got it updated. Um, you have looked at your strengths, you've identified your strengths, you've identified your areas of growth, you've identified your resource inequities that are within your capacity to address, as Kathy said, then you're going to look at your root causes. And I think we, I know for some of you who've seen this video um, already, but I always watch it. Every time I watch it, I still think it's really good. It's only three minutes and I do think we have time to watch it. But the reason why I want you to watch this too is because I'm going to use this to talk about root cause and some of the root causes that I've seen in applications um, thus far. Sound should work. Well, let me just tell you, the sound, it's just sound. It's You're just reading the subtitles. So if you can't hear the sound, you should still be able to follow along on the video. The sound is just background um, music. It's not, there's no words in the, um, in the, in the video.
So um, I want to make sure. Okay, so I'm going to hold off on this slide just for a second because I want to set a little bit of the stage here for what I've been, some of the things that I've been reading. So I think it's really important when you're doing your root cause analysis to spend the time on the whys and trying to get down to that root cause. I see a lot of big leaps. I see the start of the root cause and I'm like, okay, they're on, they're, they're really gonna layer this down. And then there's a big jump to a conclusion and an assumption. Um, I've seen a lot of chronic absenteeism is because of behavior. And then we're gonna monitor behavior, but we're not sure what behavior is causing the absenteeism, what behavior is causing, the, so there's not the getting down to um, what behavior is causing that. Or um, they start with, we have foundational, we know we're lacking some foundational skills in our literacy. Then it jumps right to, um, we need a literacy coach. That's the cause. Like, I feel like there's just a big jump and that schools aren't spending the time they need on, on the whys. So spend the time on the whys. Spend, if you talk about foundational skills, really, is it is it phonemic awareness? Is it something? And then that kind of is your root cause because just like in the Jefferson Memorial, they couldn't move the airport, um, but they could turn the lights off at 10. Um, and we need to buy a whole new literacy curriculum. Maybe you just need to focus on one area that is that is you've decided is the root cause. So with that being said, I'm going to allow, um, I'm not allow, but I want um, Kathy or some of her other uh, team members to talk about this particular slide uh, regarding the five whys or the root cause analysis. Well, I just want to say there are no spiders or midges as part of this analysis, <laughs> but that's probably a good thing. Um, okay, well, I think the thought, when you were talking, Monique, the thought that crossed my mind is, again, how important it is to utilize disaggregated data. If you're using summative data, you haven't dug down into what that content, what the content issues are for literacy or for math, as an example, or for, or for chronic absenteeism. The more you drill down and utilize the data and look at trends based on that data, the more likely you are to be able to really spend some time on the whys of the root cause and, and have it accurate. And this is just one example. Again, it goes back to our previous uh, data that came from the CNA that, that showed that the cohort grade two data dropped 10% and 19% from grade one data in fiscal year 22 and 23. So, um, you know, why did that happen? Well, we know we had inconsistent teaching at each year is one why. Well, why was that? Well, it was because we couldn't find certified teachers. And why was that? Well, many teachers did not have strong skills that we ended up hiring did not have strong skills in differentiation the curriculum, especially at the tier one instructional level. Again, if you're going to emphasize this use in MTSS, you focus on that tier one as much as you can. Um, why is that? Because the curriculum went through a lot of changes and um, teachers needed to learn new strategies and there, why was that? Because there was lack of differentiation, students weren't given uh, appropriate supports and interventions, et cetera. Um, so which is the root cause of the perceived problem? Well, in this case, we had inexperienced teachers and other teachers who really didn't have a strong uh, differentiation training and we needed some ongoing professional development in teaching basic literacy skills in addition to um, high level instructional strategies, especially to be used at the tier one instructional level. So it's just a, a simple example that many of you have experienced because of the lack of being able to find really high qualified experienced certified teachers. 
Anyone want to add anything more to that? Go for it, <laughs> Monique. So again, I think what we're trying to show is that your your root cause is what your what your action steps should be based on. So when I review the application, I going I'm going to go through and I go through your root cause and I'm like, okay, here's the identified root cause. Then I'll connect it back to what your action steps are. And so, for example, if you're talking about um, like in this one, um, we need to focus on basic literacy skills. I'm going to want to see that as action steps. Like, okay, we're going to get professional development on. We've identified that, you know, I'm just making this up. They don't know letter sounds or phonemic awareness. So we're going to get professional development on helping our teachers um, work on phonemic awareness, teaching strategies, techniques to help our students um, with their phonemic awareness. So there's that, that direct tie. So you might be questions, well, your root cause says this, but I'm not seeing the connection at this level. Um, and then the bottom part of this is just to show that, again, if you're using the template that we provide at the department, here are some of the sections that you would be pulling this from as well. So this shouldn't look any real different than your school-wide plan. It might be in a different section and you might kind of make it fit into this smaller block in the application, but there's definitely a tie. You're not creating another plan. You're not creating another, um, something else that you have to try to implement. It's all connected. And then the next slide is just the five whys template um, and just some things to think about when you're doing your five whys or whatever your root cause. This is just a, a strategy to conduct a root cause analysis. Um, you may choose to do it a, a, a different way. Um, and it really, I think the key thing here is on the right here, it says manageable cause to work on. I see a lot of plans where it's such a broad root cause like behavior. Like, how do you, like, what are you focusing? There's so many components to behavior. Uh, we need to implement a new literacy curriculum. So you're, you're, but like, is that really manageable? Because it takes three to five years to implement any good um, program. And then, so I think manageable and can you really connect that cause back to, um, to that, to the identified need? Um, and then it's, a, is it achievable? Right. So think of that as well. So that's pretty much it for this presentation. Um, and the rest of the slides are regarding just some uh, resource slides. And then we'll have some time for discussion. I kind of have a discussion if those of you who want to stay on the, to take on this, this on. But this is a resource slide. It just talks about tier three identification. These are the five ways that a school can be identified for tier three. Um, and uh, it is in the Maine's model of school support. I did not, I, I can put that link in if people would like it, but this is coming from the plan, uh, the Maine's model school support plan. This is the requirements for using SIG funds for outside consultants. Um, this question was also added to, um, was provided in grants for me, um, I think back in August, and we're creating a guidance document for this. So hopefully that'll be coming soon to you guys. Um, and the assessment monthly newsletters and office hours, um, I, I'll make sure that I put those links in um, when we get this to you guys. Um, and then I wanted to also talk about the multi-layering. This kind of shows it. So identifications over time and multi-layers of identification. This is that um, the school profile link that I provided back in your original letter with the password. This is public information. It's just not information that has to be publicly posted per the ESSA statute, but it is information that we thought schools would be would like to know. And this shows you what your identification levels are at the top. And then at the bottom, it kind of tells you which student populations over time are struggling uh, on ones that aren't struggling, ones that are that are doing well and are meeting those. Um, and then the leadership team agenda template, um, this was uh, presented back in December last year, and I've had some people reach out about it as well. And this is just kind of things that you should be talking about, uh, should be a part of every leadership team meeting. And this, it, I can put the links in the, um, in the chat in a minute. 
Um, and we're hoping we'll be coming back to this agenda um, maybe in November, maybe November, maybe December, depending. We might have some other things we want to do in November with some of the guidance documents that we're creating. But this will definitely be coming back um, at some point this year to talk about it. And then that is it. Um, resource opportunities, um, contact information. I also wanted to just put this out there that um, I do answer my phone, but I tend to struggle with returning phone calls. So if you're trying to get a hold of me and you leave a voicemail on my phone, it's the better way to, to try to get a hold of me at that point is if I don't pick up is to send me an email and say, hey, can we chat? And what I'll do is I will we'll work out a time where I will put it in my calendar. It'll be a dedicated time where we can talk about whatever concerns or questions that you have. Um, it could be on the phone or it can be through Zoom. And that way it's a dedicated time. Um, and you're not catching me like in between a meeting or um, or or something else. So that is the, the best way to um, get a hold of me if I don't pick up. I do pick up, but sometimes like I, I'm in a lot of meetings um, and I have a lot of other, um, just like you guys, I have a lot of other things that I am working on. Um, any kind of like invoicing questions, you would go to Tyra. And then I, oops, I need to update this. So Jeanette was filling in for the director, um, but it is Shelly Chassie Jandro, who is now the director of ESCA. So I will update the slide before I send it out to you. And then ways to get a hold of the main department of education or to see what's going on with the main department of education. And then I'm going to stop recording because the next slide is for more of a discussion. So.